The late Elmer Kelton was the voice of Vardis Fisher in the feature-length documentary Soul of a People, Writing America's Story. Kelton was a journalist and an award-winning writer who penned over 40 Western novels, including The Good Old Boys, which was made into a 1995 TV movie starring Tommy Lee Jones. Kelton was a Texas institution. He was born and raised in the state, and the state legislature created Elmer Kelton Day in his honor in April 1997. In this interview conducted after a Soul of a People voiceover session in 2008, Kelton talked about Vardis Fisher's life and writing, his own views on Western literature, and the fierce independence that still pervades the West. Well, I found this personality uh, a little acerbic, but very interesting. I found that uh, my opinion of uh, most government programs seems to be pretty similar to his. I did read uh, some Vardis Fisher back some years back. I remember one book in particular called Pemmican and a couple of others whose titles I don't remember. I thought he uh, brought out that period and those people quite well. I, this was the classic mountain man period. These early hunters and trappers went out into what to them was an unknown wilderness, but they were, by and large, these people were loners. They were people with considerable self-confidence in their ability to survive and, and prevail. And I think that uh, this sort of attitude uh, continued on through the pioneer period, and to some degree, we, especially in the West, we have uh, some of it left. It's still out here. I'm afraid it diminishes a little with each generation, but uh, there's a good bit of it still left. Nothing brings out this attitude more than when Westerners perceive a threat to their way of life from Easterners. If you, if you look at the ranching community, for instance, there is a tendency, especially in the western public land states, from good many groups to try to push all the livestock off the public lands, which, of course, leaves the livestock raisers with, with no uh, way to make a living, at least in the way that they've been accustomed over the years through the generations. So there's, there's this constant fear of and, and resistance to anything that might drive them out of business and take the land over for other uses. Some of these people who don't mind running their snowmobiles through the parks in the wintertime and scaring the wildlife off uh, uh, still object to seeing cattle out there. Maybe in some of these people there's also a little uh, resentment against the independent attitude that these Westerners show, you know, that they don't take orders easily. And some of these people do love to give orders. So is this independent spirit still fodder for books and film? Does the classic Western with its cowboys and frontier justice live on? Sort of, Kelton says. Yeah, the, the Western is still with us. The old, uh, just classic shoot 'em up Western uh, is pretty hard to, to sell these days. Most of the stories of the West being published today are a little bit stronger in the historical background and in the characterization and usually try to present some relevance to today. But, says Kelton, literary critics pay little attention to books written about the West unless the books take an extremely critical approach to their subject matter. Uh, in that case, they'll, they'll, they'll like it, but the Western by and large is just uh, is in a sort of a literary ghetto and gets very little attention in the critical establishment. And therefore, of course, uh, some publishers take that into account. I've been real fortunate over the years to have had a number of good publishers, and they always seem receptive to what I do. I think that the critical establishment tends to be very liberal, and the the Western is, is anything but. It tends to be on be conservative. And I think a lot of this is just a difference in the political outlook and social outlook. There, there is a tendency to regard anything Western as being juvenile. And a lot of this prejudice goes back to the very early days of the first pulp magazines, the uh, what they used to call penny dreadfuls. And the Western has never totally outgrown this despite uh, tremendous uh, literary works about the West and some great movies, you know, about the West. But uh, those, the reception that those people have been accorded is, is I'd say, uh, somewhat rare. 